Today we're kicking off a brand new mini-series here on the channel. It's all about alcohol-free beers. I've touched the topic before, but I thought now it's time to really get into it. So we're going to talk about brewing alcohol-free beers today. We're going to taste two commercial samples. And I do come into this mini-series a little bit underprepared, but that's intentional because I want you to be a part of this journey, what this journey will take us. And I have some ideas, but I want you to like comment down below on your ideas and what you think would be appropriate for us home brewers. Because there are several ways to brew alcohol-free beer, but I think I will try at least three different methods that would be most appropriate for us home brewers. And even though you aren't into non-alcoholic beers, I still think this could be interesting for you to tag along on this journey. Yeah. Let's get this started. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. So if you want to learn with me how to become better at beer and brewing, consider becoming a subscriber. And of course, check that little bell so you get notification when I put out a new video. And it really helps out if you give this video a like. So I have two beers here. One Pilsner, Stora Plamen, and one Swedish beer, an IPA. And they are both non-alcoholic. This is 0.5 ABV, and that's the rule here in Sweden. And that's what I'm going with, 0.5%. If I get my brews under that, we are fine. This is 0%. I'm not aiming for that. Links to the Shilish opener and to these glasses down below in the description. Also, a link to today's sponsor, Brewgoat. First link in the description. So let's give this a pour, label out. And of course, these are two different kind of beers, but yeah, we need something to drink whilst we talk. To me, alcohol-free beers are always kind of funny. I tasted a really interesting alcohol-free beer uh, when I moved all of this wood just over here. So we could... No, it was just here! <gasps> I will link to that down below in the description. I don't know why I'm trying to compare them. Let's uh, try the Pilsner so the IPA could heat up a little bit. But it's not... This is Sweden, so it's not like super warm. There is something weird with it. It's okay, but something weird. So, so the goal should obviously be to brew a non-alcoholic beer that is as good as possible. How good can we brew a non-alcoholic beer? Have you ever brewed a non-alcoholic beer? Please comment down below. It would really help this out to share your experience. Let's first go through some different methods. One method could be just to water down a, a beer until it becomes 0.5%. Uh, that doesn't sound interesting to me. Another idea, which ain't that far from that, would be to brew a beer with less malt, so we end up with a beer under 0.5%. A commercial example of that would be Brewdog Nanny State. I will link to that recipe down below in the description. A lot of different ingredients, which I think could be an idea if you're going that route. Yeah. You have some fermentables, but they are mostly like specialty malt that doesn't ferment that good. And depending on the yeast, if you're, you're using also like a yeast, like a Windsor yeast or Lallemand ESB yeast, which has a hard time consuming more complex sugars like USO5, SO4, like a common yeast has, you would be able to put more malt in that. And those sugars aren't really sweet, but they do give the beer more full body. And the more malt you can punch in there, of course, also you will have more flavor. If you're doing all grain, you should really mash in the high temperature range. And if you are extra brewer, you can't really do so much about that, really. You could add maltodextrin, of course. Let me just take a minute here and give a big shout out to my 
patrons. Thank you so much, guys, for helping out, and of course, my channel member. And today's sponsor, Brugoat. Brugoat is a Swedish homebrew supplier. They have a physical store here in Stockholm, Sweden. But yeah, you can go and check them out online. First link in the description, and they ship like worldwide. So yeah, go and check them out. It has some flavor, more flavor than the Pilsner. There's still something weird with it. Uh, maybe instead we should have compared the IPA to the real IPA and the Pilsner to the real Pilsner. Maybe we can do that also. Compare the, because th this is called, uh, I'm gonna go and get the bottles. It's called Ship Full of IPA alcohol free and they have a full version so that will be interesting and really compare them and we have the star problem and of course there's an uh, alcohol beverage with the same name so there we have another interesting episode for this mini series an interesting genre in this mini series could also be like sour beers because sour beers can be really good even at a low ABV like uh, Berliner Weisse, uh, for example. So that could in be interesting. One of the best alcoholic-free beers have been a uh, sour beer. Also had some wheat beers that have been okay, so maybe we should check into that also. I think some styles are better. There's something weird with this, and I have, have tried like low ABV IPAs before, and there have always been something weird with them also. There's always something that is just strange. This do taste a lot like wort, unfermented wort, and we don't want that. Of course, we could do an alcohol-free beer if we like stop the fermentation or add a lot of wort in it, kill off the yeast. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not interested in that. As I said, one idea is like the banana state. We have very low amount of malt and the, the most of the malts are harder to ferment, like specialty malt. You can also play with the yeast a little bit there. Another approach would be to brew like a normal beer and then heat it up. And I have two ideas for that. One would be to brew a beer just like normal, ferment it, and after the fermentation, heat it up too. And I don't have that degree now in uh, my mind, but the boiling temperature of alcohol can put that temperature up. Please, doctor, put the temperature up here. And you have to hold it there for, I think, at least like 30 minutes. And that, of course, will affect the flavor. And uh, there will be a lot of off-gassing, of course. We will lose volume. We can count in for that, I think. Another twist with that method of heating would be to do like a no boil or a 50 minute boil with just a bitter addition or not boil it at all, just do a mash out. So we're practically doing a no boil, but I do want to add some hops of that to preserve the, the beer. Then ferment it out. And I'm thinking then we could just boil that wort as normal beer and hop it as normal. And straight from there, we should go into keg or dry hopping, maybe dry hopping in the keg. But I have no idea how that will affect flavor. Because to me, hops and yeast interact with each other. And this way we would like hop the beer after fermentation during the boil like normal. And we could, could even dry hop it. And the, the first hop addition, the, the bitter charge, if we have done a 50 minute boil before fermentation, we could do a 45 minute boil and count that as 60. Maybe this ain't gonna be like an exact math. Or we could do a no boil and after fermentation do a 60 minute boil, just like a normal beer. That would be interesting. It's not so far away from when people are doing kettle sours. But they, of course, ferment after the boil. And another really interesting idea is 
to use a yeast that actually don't produce alcohol because they are yeast that produce extremely low amounts of alcohol but still consume sugar. So that could be an interesting way and those yeast they shouldn't be so hard to get your hands on so that is one style of uh, brewing non-alcoholic beer I really want to try. Those examples working in those different territories could be interesting stuff for home brewers. So like less malt, heating after fermentation or using a yeast that doesn't produce alcohol. There are three ways that we could talk about that I think is good for home brewers. Another idea would be to ferment uh, beer just as usual. Try to like separate the alcohol and, and water and get like the flavors to one side like an uh, RO system, reverse osmosis, something like that and after that you will add water back to it. That could be done, I think some commercial brewers are doing it that way but I don't think that is for me and I think there are actually more methods than, than these four I've talked about now but I think still that the three methods I've talked about in the beginning less malt or heating after fermentation or using a yeast that does not produce alcohol would be the interesting part. What do you guys think? What do you think of my ideas going into this mini series? Comment down below. Have you ever brewed a non-alcoholic beer? What method of brewing a non-alcoholic beer are you most interested in seeing here on the channel? If you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you get notification when I'll put out a new video and like and share this video. Cheers and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.